you very much, Steve. Hi, everyone. Um, hopefully, you all can hear me clearly. Um, so welcome to the session. My name is Indu, and I'm the Deputy Dean here at the Engineering Institute of Technology. Um, I'm a Chartered Engineer as well as a Fellow of Engineers Australia, and my background is in um, electronics and electrical engineering. Um, enough about me, but we'll go on with, um, you know, what is EIT about and um, some of our key core values. So one of the things that we strongly believe in is lifelong learning. So there's no such thing as, you know, you've done your, let's say your year 12 or your O-levels and, you know, you're done with um, your education or you've done your bachelor's and you're done with education. Engineering is about learning something new every day and be it a formal qualification or be it, you know, what you're doing in your, you know, after hours, after work, we're always learning something new. And EIT provides you with a clear pathway to allow you to progress from one qualification to other. So this is about formal qualifications. So we allow you, you know, to transition from your career wherever you are. And it's not a one way journey. So it's not just going from a technician to a technologist to a professional engineer. Sometimes people can reroute and come back and do a technologist qualification in a different discipline, for example. So it's like, a, I would say like a cycle, you can go in and out, weave in and out, and you know, go that come to any part of your life that needs a little bit more of enhancement. So we deliver pathways for students, you know, it doesn't matter which pathway you're coming from. So you might be a recent graduate wanting to do a qualification, or you might be, you know, um, already have done a bachelor degree and you're trying to do uh, advance your career, or you might be already in a, you know, a senior engineer, but wanting to do some sort of a professional development. So whatever it might be that you want to do, we are here to provide you with the, those options. So I'm just going to the next slide. Uh, Riley, I'm having trouble. Yeah, okay, thank you. So this is just a little bit of um, um, pathway that, can, that you can see here, the graph which shows you the uh, different, you know, entries and exits you can take. So, you know, for example, if you've got a trade qualification with some work experience, you know, you, you have entry into multiple different qualifications. It just depends on what kind of, you know, prior qualification you have, plus the amount of experience and the level of experience you have that we take into consideration. Um, so we always assess your applications on a case by case basis. Um, so say, for example, you might think that, you know, oh, I started a Bachelor of Science, I've only did um, two years, I didn't finish my Bachelor of Science. Now I've gone and worked for the last 10 years, can I come and do your master's? Maybe, you know, put your application through, we might assess your, you know, what kind of bachelor's, uh, you know, you completed, what kind of um, subjects you have. And the answer could be yes or no. But again, we assess your situation on a case by case basis. Um, so again, th these are different pathways that are available for you. So if you're coming from a formal qualification after graduation, for example, you can enter, for example, your undergraduate certificate, you can enter an advanced diploma, or a Bachelor of Science directly, it just depends on what you want your path to look like. Nobody's path is going to be the same. So, you know, you might decide, hey, I might want to try and do just an undergrad certificate at the moment to see if I like engineering. And, you know, after you complete your undergrad certificate, you'll realize, yeah, actually, I do like engineering. So I want to continue. And you might continue to do a Bachelor of Science. Or you might say, I do like engineering, but actually, I want to get an advanced diploma because the roles I'm getting in this field are, you know, that's more suitable. So it depends on what, what you want to do. Okay. Let's uh, go on to the next one. Now, quite a few of you might wonder, so how is it, well, uh, you know, studying online? You know, it's obviously different from face-to-face -face learning. So how do we make it work online? So we're gonna look at some of the technologies and tools that we use online and, you know, what you will be exposed to when you are studying with us. So we do have a very unique online delivery methodology. Um, so it makes uses of, you know, live and interactive tutorials. So like we are, I am talking to you right now, which is live, students will be there um, joining me online from different parts of the world. And they might be asking questions in the platform as well. And I will be answering as I go. Uh, students also are able to turn on their video cameras and use their microphones to participate with me. And similar to a classroom, I can actually put you 
uh, all in groups and ask you to work on a problem and then come back and you know we discuss the problem. So there's lots of ways that we use to interact and engage with students. And similarly, as you saw in the beginning of the session, you all come from different parts of the world and so do our lecturers. You know, So we have an international pool of expert lecturers, um, uh, which actually allows us to pick the best and the brightest from different parts of the world and give you the expertise that you need for your, uh, not just your subject matter expertise, but it actually gives you a more global perspective of how it is. You know, When you go into a workforce, you're not going to only deal with people from one part of the world. As you know, uh, engineering, as well as the world, is a very multicultural society. So giving you access to not just your, um, you know, your classmates who are from different parts of the world, having lectures from different parts of the world also opens up your mind to that global perspective. On top of that, you also have the very important part, the learning support officers. Now, there, you have a dedicated learning support officer in, you know, depending on your advanced diploma, you will have one throughout your course. Or if you're in, um, you know, a bachelor degree or an undergrad cert or a master degree, you will have a few. But, you know, depending on the units you're doing, you'll have a dedicated learning support officer for each unit. And, you know, uh, other question on your minds would be, well, you're talking about engineering. How am I going to do it online in terms of the practical aspects? So we do the practical aspects in a very, in a, you know, we attack it from different perspectives. So we do have hands-on workshops. Um, that's for the higher education side, where there's a two-week intensive hands-on workshop that students come live and participate physically. But we also have remote and virtual laboratories that are as good or even better than your, you know, hands-on workshops. I'll explain why they are much better um, in the next couple of slides. But as an online student, you know, you actually would benefit from the unique, personalized and synchronous teaching that we do. So it's not just about listening to a video on your own time. Of course, the live sessions are recorded, so you can actually go back and revise it. You know, you know what, you know, let's say I'm teaching a maths concept you don't understand. You can actually listen to the recording again and try to understand what was going on. Or for whatever reason, if you have work commitment and had to miss that session, again, you can also listen to the recording. But you also have access to your lecturers live face-to-face, -face, obviously in virtual mode, and ask questions at the same time. You know, if you're not understanding something, you can ask questions through your live chat. Let's go on to the next one. So our remote and virtual laboratories. Now, this I actually think is one of the best things that happened, you know, since the birthing of um, uh, IoT, the Internet of Things, because it actually allows students to have a flexible education while they're managing their jobs, while they're managing their families and their careers. What it does is it actually gives you access to um, two things. One is real equipment that is connected to sensors and video cameras or web cameras. So you're able to see when you do, you know, when you control the program through your um, computer, what actually happens. You're able to actually visualize it. The other one is softwares. Now, softwares that are loaded on our computers or on the cloud that you can access anywhere, anytime. And the benefit of that is that you don't have to have a powerful computer on your end, for example, to access a 3D um, simulation software or a CAD software. You don't have to purchase it. So we have it all hosted on our end and you're able to access it. And again, you're able to access it 24 seven Anytime. So anytime. So let's say you come back from work and you have, you've got a couple of hours on your hand before, let's say you go to bed. You can jump onto a remote lab, do a CAD simulation, do a CAD drawing and see, you know, what's happened. You have an assignment, you worked on it, it doesn't work. Okay, no problem. Book another session next day. Try it again. So you have access to it over and over again, which you, want, you can't get in a real life um, laboratory situation. Okay. And best of all as well, it's actually very safe. So, you know, you break it, we fix it on our end. You don't have to worry about it as well. So it gives you a lot of flexibility to um, engage with these remote and virtual laboratories. And I talked about learning support offices briefly previously. And again, they, I think they are one of the best things that um, we offer as a student support. And we actually see that from our feedback over and over again. Uh, they are there in addition to your instructors and lecturers. So, you know, the, um, you know if you have any problem to, from your onboarding process through to graduation, they are your first point of contact to talk about, okay? You, you know, if you have any issues that's going on in your life where you might, you know, have facing some problems and you want to extend your um, assessment time, 
again, they'll be your first point of contact. And, you know, there is one LSO dedicated for the duration of the entire program. If you're doing a professional certificate or a vet course, which is your advanced diplomas and diplomas. And you have one LSO dedicated to each individual unit that you undertake in higher education courses. And we have, again, LSOs who are um, based all around the world. So we have some in South Africa, Switzerland, Zimbabwe, New Zealand and Australia, and also in the UK. So there are people who are also able to address to some of the queries you have you know, any time in the day, and you don't have to wait um, to get your queries answered. Now, why study with us? I mean, why not go to other universities? Well, after looking at these results, you might actually decide um, why you want to study with EIT. So this is a um, result from our 2020 and 2021 results from Student Experience Survey from Quilt, uh, the Quality Indicator for Learning and Teaching, where all higher education institutions uh, or many higher education institutions and universities around Australia participate. And among all the universities and higher education institutes for engineering, we were the first, we came top in the quality of entire educational experience for undergraduate programs. We came second for quality of entire educational experience for postgraduate um, programs. We were rated number two for student support for both undergraduate and postgraduate programs. And again, we came on the top three for the teaching quality for undergraduate and postgraduate engineering programs. And again, like I said, this is among all the universities and higher education institutes in Australia who are delivering engineering programs. So, you know, I think that gives us a you know really good uh, reason why you should join EIT and not um, any other universities. Just a little bit more about our accreditation. So, you know, some of you might have questions, you know, who are we? Because we are private, people don't understand. But we are a registered training organization in Australia uh, since 2008. So we are um, endorsed by the government, the registered and regulated by the Australian Skills Quality Authority, ASQA, for our diploma, advanced diploma and graduate certificates. Uh, we are also an institute of higher education provider registered and regulated by the tertiary education and quality standards agency in Australia since 2014. And that's for your higher education courses, which ranges from your undergrad certificate all throughout your doctorate program. And we also have CRI course registration, so the Commonwealth Register for International Courses for Overseas Students, and that's since 2018. So this allows us to offer on-campus programs for our students. And this uh, is only for our higher education programs. And this is also registered and regulated by the um, TEXA, Tertiary Education Quality Standards Authority. We, have, we are also registered uh, for as a uh, fee help provider as well for higher ed and a wet student loans provider for the vocational education side. On top of all these, we also have industry um, um, endorsement through Engineers Australia. And we have accreditations for three of our advanced diplomas, four of our bachelor programs and two of our masters. And we have a few more in the pipeline. Hopefully we'll know in the next month or so about those. Uh, and we'll have more, again, more courses on, um, on board registered with Engineers Australia. Uh, in terms of the programs with Engineers Australia, so there are different accords, as most of you would know. Um, so the three programs in the advanced diploma that are accredited with Engineers Australia at the level of engineering associate or the Dublin Accord are the advanced diploma of industrial automation, the advanced diploma of applied electrical engineering and the advanced diploma of mechanical engineering. And again, it tells you um, the cohorts that they started with and you know the level of accreditation as well. So these qualifications, because it's under international accords, they are also recognized by other um, professional organizations in places like Canada, Ireland, Korea, New Zealand, et cetera, which means it gives you a greater global mobility. So even if you've got a qualification from Australia, you can actually get it recognized to go and work in the United States or the United Kingdom or South Africa. And you know, so it doesn't stop you from you know, pursuing a um, education or qualification from another country. And then we have our Sydney Accord. So these programs are at the level of engineering technologist under the Sydney Accord. So these are our four bachelor programs, Bachelor of Science, 
which covers your electrical, mechanical, civil, and industrial automation. And these are, again, we are um, we teach them online as well as on campus here at Perth. And again, these are also recognized by other international uh, signatories from different countries. Uh, you know, that includes um, Canada, Chinese Taipei, Hong Kong, China, Ireland, Korea, etc. So again, it offers you that global mobility. And finally, under the Washington Accord, we have two of our master's programs, the Master of Electrical and the Master of Industrial Automation. And this is accredited uh, to a level of professional engineer under the Washington Accord. And again, under this signatory, again, you have a much more wider range as well where the programs are recognized, which means again, you get the greater global mobility. Now, I just want to take a couple of more minutes just to, you know, again, why choose EIT? Just to recap, we have internationally endorsed Australian qualifications, um, and they are practical, relevant courses designed by the industry. Um, so we actually get a lot of um, industry input before we design our courses. It's part of our accreditation process. Uh, presented by engineering professionals from around the world. Again, our academics are not just academics, they actually have work experience in the industry and they can share with you how they solve the problems in the workplace. And like I mentioned, our programs, various programs are accredited by Engineers Australia. And you also have a great uh, access to a great depth of resources online. So we have an e-library that you can have lots of um, access to. We provide a very supportive learning environment. We provide you with lots of support, not just through learning support offices, but our lecturers and extracurricular sessions where we provide you with, you know, software training, uh, you know, and, you know, things like professional development courses that helps you. Other thing is we specialize purely in engineering. So we don't do other courses. So our focus is purely on delivering quality engineering and technology and science courses, nothing more. And you've got your journey all the way from, you know, where you want to start. You want to start at a professional development and move on to, you know, all the way up to doctorate. We have a way for you. And we also strongly support and advocate for more women in engineering as well. And again, that gives you a kind of a good overview of who we are. Obviously, you'll learn more about um, who we are in depth in the following sessions. Um, but that's all from my session. And I think we'll be going into Q&A next. Thank you very much.